you know they pretend that uh, you Zelensky is like a freedom fighter and stuff, and he's yeah. doing the exact. He's the worst. He's way worse than Putin is in a lot of ways. Uh, and this is one of them. Uh, you, uh, he's horrible. He's outlawed opposition media, yet they still give him a press freedom score that's really good. Watch well, this. Jimmy, if America's at war, would you expect them to ban all <laughs> press freedom? France-based press watchdog group Reporters Without Borders <clears throat> recently released its scores and rankings for international press freedom. In 2022, Reporters Without Borders gave Ukraine a score of 55.76 out of 100, placing it 106th out of 180 countries surveyed. That's not good. <laughs> That's really bad. In the most recent report, Issued after over a year of war, Ukraine shot to 79th out of 180 with a new score of 61.19. This despite wartime measures that banned opposition parties, consolidated media under state control, and saw journalist speech chilled by unprecedented intimidation. By the way, I'm, on, I'm now on the Ukraine kill uh -huh. list. I got to do a segment on that. I'm on it. Thank God I made it finally. Oh, my God. Wartime measures in any country often result in a loss of press freedom. To say that such restrictions are typical, however, does not mean that they are therefore not really happening. For RSF, so that's Reporters Without Borders, to change the standards it applies to Ukraine, as it apparently has, because the country has been invaded, and is to endorse the idea that freedom of the press ought to be limited in times of danger. An odd position, to say the least, for a group of dedicated group dedicated to protecting the rights of journalists to take fair it's from fair by ordinary standards the position of the press in ukraine has not improved in the past year but dramatically worsened in an exhaustive article branko marcetic through thoroughly outlined outlined how democratic institutions have deteriorated in ukraine as a result of the war Ivan Kachanaganovsky, a Ukrainian political scientist at the University of Ottawa, told Marcetic that Zelensky used the Russian invasion and the war as a pretext to eliminate most of the political opposition and potential rivals for power and to consolidate his largely undemocratic rule. This continues a trend since before the war. In 2021, Zelensky had banned the most popular news website in the country. He then banned media outlets affiliated with one of the most popular parties in the country. In a case that elicited international condemnation, Vasil Muradovsky was forced to flee to Finland after being accused of treason and allegedly disseminating anti-Ukrainian materials. His prosecution began before the war, but has continued in absentia during the invasion. Among other wartime measures, Zelensky suspended, then banned 11 opposition parties due to their alleged links to Russia. One of these parties had even held 10% of the seats in the Ukrainian parliament before the move. Journalists and anyone else with a political opinion are well aware of the consequences of speaking out, and the pressures have only intensified. So this is the, the graphic shows that Ukraine has jumped from 106th, which is where they were, to 79th since the Russian invasion. We'll see who they're behind. Uh, oh, that just gives you their score. Uh, so this is um, so Yemen, Honduras, Saudi Arabia, Cuba, Miramar. North Korea is, is 180. They're the worst. China's right above them. Uh, note that Yemen and Syria, which are also countries with wars raging inside their borders, don't seem to be granted the same justifications for press repression as Ukraine. Oh, yeah, look, see? Huh. In July, Zelensky consolidated television organizations into a single government-controlled channel. <laughs> Press freedom guy. In a wildly criticized move, Zelensky signed a law that expanded the ability of the state regulator controlled by Zelensky and his party to issue fines, revoke licenses, and prevent publication for media organizations. 
The top Ukrainian journalists' unions opposed the law. The head of one union warned that government officials will declare those who disagree with their vision to be enemies of the country or foreign agents. This perspective of state and political regulation of the media is in total contradiction with the desire of Ukrainian civil society for European integration. So just like here in America, what they do now is if they want to shut you up, they say you're a terrorist and they say they don't have to give you a trial and they can put you in. It's called a definite detention. So all I have to do, that, that's something they did up at the, the people at Standing Rock. They were going up against the oil companies, so they just called them environmental terrorists. And then you can put them in jail as a terrorist. And you can ban their organizations because they're terrorist organizations. That's what he's doing in Ukraine. The International Federation of Journalists called on the European Commission and Council of Europe to review the measure. The Committee to Protect Journalists repeatedly called on the Ukrainian government to drop the bill, warning that it imperils press freedom in the country by tightening government control over information. Unlike other international journalism centered NGOs, which stands for non-governmental organizations, Reporters Without Borders offered praise for the bill. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds like Reporters Without Borders has been infiltrated and compromised. Let's wait to see how Bellingcat weighs in. Before yeah, we... <laughs> let's wait to see how Bellingcat weighs in. In a blog post titled, RSF Hails Ukraine's Adoption of New Media Law Despite War with Russia, it wrote that the law was generally welcomed by Ukrainian journalists. Mm-hmm. The ones that are still alive. This praise was based on minor provisions that were required for Ukrainian admission to the European Union as it harmonized Ukrainian legislation with European law. This was acknowledged as a positive move by the National Union of Journalists of Ukraine, one of the unions opposed to the bill. But as the National Union of Journalists of Ukraine made clear, Journalists objected to the enormous control given to the state media regulators, not these less important provisions. So you saw what happened. I don't have to explain it. The latest report downgraded Russia's already low standing from 155th to 164th place on the list. Its report on Russia began appropriately by noting what the Russian government had done to the press. Since Russia invaded Ukraine in February of 2022, almost all independent media have been banned, blocked, and or declared foreign agents or undesirable organizations. The report on Ukraine, by contrast, began by talking about Russia. The war launched by Russia on the 24th of February 2022 threatens the survival of the Ukrainian media. In this information war, Ukraine stands at the front lines of resistance against the expansion of the Kremlin's propaganda system. This framing allows Reporters Without Borders to present the banning of media regarded as pro-Kremlin as an act of resistance rather than repression. Reporters Without Borders is a prestigious international institution respected by many in the world of media and human rights. Unfortunately, like many in the media, it appears to have been taken on the role of cheerleader for Ukraine in a proxy war, abandoning the pretense of being an objective monitor. In Ukraine, the past year has been devastating for a country already struggling with media repression. Reporters Without Borders' denial of reality does nothing to actually help Ukraine. But downplaying these problems will only further imperil press freedoms. So there you go. Uh, pre- well, everybody's pretending that borders with reporters without borders. They got to them, Kurt. They got to everything. When the ACLU wrote a Amber Heard could pay him off to in her divorce, I suspect that a lot of the institutions weren't right. <laughs> the ACLU went along with mandates. Yeah, that's how corrupt the ACLU is, and the ACLU is corrupt. Everybody just buys these things. They They went along with mandates. They went along with mandates. The Civil Liberties Union went along with forcing people to take an experimental medical treatment. Forcing them with no long-term studies. One out of 800 people having adverse events. 
Check out my new stand-up special, COVID Lies Are Funny, at JimmyDoor.com. Only $10, become a premium member. We're going to be on tour in Northampton, Massachusetts, Syracuse, Cohoes, New York, Hartford, Los Angeles, Bakersfield, California, Baltimore, Maryland, and San Francisco, California. Plus, do we say Chicago? There's lots of stuff. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for tickets. See you there.